Now that you have learned the three possible solutions for any system of linear equations in the previous lesson, and you have learned how to predict and how to decide whether the system of linear equations should have one solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution at all. Now is the time to practice on the determination of consistency of any system of linear equations. Assume that you have one augmented matrix as below with the coefficients of the unknowns are unknowns. Now let's determine the values for Q for P and Q such that the system has the system of linear equation has one solution, infinitely many solutions and no solution. Let's look at the case for one solutions. We have three columns here. So the unknowns should be n equals to three. And to have one solution, the number of independent equations must be three also. Hence, we can't have any row to be all zeros. Why? Recall back from the previous lesson, when I say that to prove that that particular equation is independent, we need to show that it has a leading one. So we need to have three leading one in this system such that the system has one solution or the system has three independent equations. So we check the left hand side of the augmented matrix. Let's look at the first, the third row. We start from the bottom. So Q plus one. If the third row must be an independent equation, the entry, the leading, there must be a leading one and three here. So we have zero, zero here and definitely this must be one. So Q plus one, cannot be zero because if it is equals to zero and we have we'll have a one whole row equals to zero so we lack of one independent equation so q plus one must not be zero it can be any value one negative one two three and so on but it can't be zero so you know that the condition is q must not equals to negative one such that the q plus one would not be zero and if you look at the second row, so second row for this one. So the leading one for the third column belongs to the third row. So the leading one of the second column must be from the second row. So the negative P here must not be zero because if the P here is zero, we wouldn't have any leading one in the second column. That's why the P should not be zero. And let's look at the first row. So we have leading one from the two previous as assumption here. The leading one in the third row is in the second, the third column. The leading one in the second row is in the second column. So the leading one in the first row should be in the first column and hence the p should not be zero because if p is zero then you don't have any leading one for the first column and the first row so the conclusion is the p and q can be any, any value as long as p does not equal to zero and q does not equal to negative one well to be safe we have to check on the right hand side as well so if you look at the right hand side it doesn't matter what values should be here because if you have a three, you have a zero here, you have a negative one, negative five or five or two, any values here would not affect the solution here because eventually you can have, uh, let's say this corresponding to the Z unknown, Z equals to one, negative one or even zero. It's fine because you have the solution. So it doesn't matter for any value of P since at the end, the unknowns on the left hand side will be assigned to it. So this is how you decide on the one solutions. Next, let's move on to the infinitely many solutions. And the number of unknowns must be larger than the number of equations. So this is what we learned from the previous lesson. So at least one of the row has to be all zero such that the number of independent equations can be reduced to be lesser than the number of unknowns here. Let's look at the third row. The third row, the only entry is Q plus one. And on the right hand side is five plus two P equals to zero for this one. 
So to get both equals to zero, such that we have the whole row equivalent to all zero entries, and the value of Q must be negative one, and P must be negative five over two, such that the substitution into this and into this will give you a zero. So these two values will give us a one row with all zero. So this is the case when I substitute the value of P and Q into the system. So the last row has been turned into a row with all zero entries. And you can check if the proposed values will result in contradict results in the first and the second row or not. So because we don't want to have an illogical expression. So we substitute the value of P here, P here, and Q here. And it seems like the system looks fine. So we don't have illogical expressions in this case and thus we can conclude that the q equal equals to negative 1 and p equivalent to negative 5 over 2 will result and will result in infinitely many solutions and the last one the last case is the no solutions under what values of p and q to obtain illogical equations well we only need one illogical equations to prove no solutions but not Normally, we'll start from the bottom row because the bottom row only has one entry. In our original equations, is the Q plus 1 here. So we look at the third row. Q plus 1 equals to 0. And the right-hand side here should not be 0 because if you have a 0 here, then we'll have to go back to the infinitely many solutions. To get the illogical equations, we have to make the entries on the left hand side here all equals to zero and the entry here must not be zero such that we'll get zero x plus zero y plus zero z does not equals to zero so q plus one must be zero so q can be negative one and the five plus two p must not be zero so p must not be negative five over two it can be any value as long as not negative 5 over 2, which will give you a 0 here. So you get an illogical equation when you give, when you decide Q equals to negative 1 and P does not equal to negative 5 over 2, but it can be any values. Now, not only you can consider the third row, you can consider the second row as well. So to get illogical equations, you have to make sure that the entries long on the left hand side has to be all zero and on the right hand side it must not be zero so for the second row when you let p equals to zero and q equals to zero refer back to the original equation so this is actually uh, after i substitute the value of q so it's not accurate you have to refer back to the original equations original matrix so when you have p and q equals to zero zero here and the constant on the right hand side will be equivalent to 3. So this is another form of illogical equations, which means that P equals to 0 and Q equals to 0 is another condition where you will have no solutions for the system of linear equations. Similarly, you can check on the first row. So to get illogical equations, you have to get all 0 on the left hand side and a constant on the right hand side. Well, you eventually you will get p equals to zero and q equals to zero, which will give you an illogical equation here. So the conclusion: to have no solutions, we have two possible outcomes. Either you have the p equals to zero and q equals to zero, or p can be any values as long as not negative five or two, and q must be negative one. So both sets of data will give illogical equations and thus no solutions.